each hour plus 40 minutes. We left our troop ships and climbed into these little assault vessels. It was a dark, dreary day. The waves were very choppy, and these little boats bounced up and down, up and down, up and down. The assault boat uh, got stuck on a sandbar. They put the ramps down, and we jumped into the water. And we had about 20 yards to go before we uh, got to dry land. When, when I jumped in the water, the water level was just about up to my nose. I must have been carrying about 60 pounds of equipment. When I couldn't go any further, I just fell down in the sand to get my second wind, so to speak. And it was just about this time when that picture was taken. I didn't see any photographer at the time. And of course, I wasn't looking for one either. I, I was dead set on making my way to that seawall for whatever protection I could get. We were scared to death. <laughs> Den 6 juni 1944, den berömda dagen D, då allierade trupper landstiger i Normandie. Operationen som leds av general Eisenhower överrumplar tyskarna. Nazisterna är beredda på en invasion, men de vet varken tid eller plats. Mer än 600 000 soldater, mest amerikaner och britter, landstiger på fransk jord. För Europa är det första steget mot befrielsen från det nazistiska oket. Den 15 augusti landstiger andra allierade trupper i Sydfrankrike. När de två invasionsstyrkorna möts den 12 september är Paris redan befriat. Tyskarna flyr hals över huvud. Nazisterna är slutgiltigt besegrade den 30 april 1945 när Hitler begår självmord i Berlin. På tidskriften Life i London var John Morris chefredaktör. Bland de sex fotografer som Leif valt ut för att ta bilder av landstigningen fanns Robert Capa, dåtidens mest berömde krigsfotograf. My last clear memory of Capa before D-Day was uh, in the office. He had given a big party for Ernest Hemingway. No one wanted to talk in advance about the danger. Uh, we all knew it, but one didn't talk about it. We felt as journalists that we were covering the most important story in history. Uh, we felt as journalists that, that uh, an enormous responsibility. Uh, these pictures were extremely important. Americans were fighting a war 3,000 miles from their own shores. And why should they do that? They had to see what their, what their men were facing. We believed in that war. Uh, it was a war that, that had to be won. Det tog två dagar för Kapas foton att nå London. Alla väntade på bilderna och John Morris gjorde det under oerhörd spänning. Men det visade sig att negativen var skadade. Man hade haft för bråttom vid framkallningen. I told the Life Lab to rush. And a young man uh, put the films in a dry in a drying cabinet and he turned on more heat than usual because of the rush. And a few minutes later, he came into my office screaming hysterically, they're ruined, they're ruined. And I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. So I, went, I rushed to the dark room, which was on the lower floor, and I looked at the films, one, nothing. Just the emulsion had just, yeah. And the second one, same thing, nothing. And the third one, nothing. And finally, on the fourth roll of film, the last one, I found a, a strip of film, about 11 frames that had images. Life published his pictures saying they were slightly out of focus. And they said that because they were very grainy. So it looked as though he was shaking. Kampa thought it was a joke, thank God. And he even called uh, the book he wrote about his adventures slightly out of focus, which was made me relax. <laughs> when I came home from the service, my mother had cut these photographs out of Life magazine. She showed them to me, and she pointed out this one. And she said, isn't that you? And I said, it could very well be me. It looks like me. And I remember being in that position. This picture. If anything else, it has 
made me a different person. I was about 19 years old at the time. So that was a, that was a big thing in my life, going from teenhood to, to, uh, to manhood. Thank you.